Hi guys and welcome to Radwolf and Bushcraft. Thanks a lot for tuning in. In this short video I just want to quickly talk about drying cooksas and yeah, discuss a method that worked very well for me. And maybe you know the following problem. You just get yourself a piece of wood like this piece of birch right here and then you start working through the steps. So splitting it, drawing your cooksa, doing the rough carving work to the finer work, right? And then at some point down to the sanding and finishing your product that it looks somewhat like this. And throughout this entire process, it can happen that cracks develop in your cooksa. Like in my particular case, I often had cracks develop right alongside the grain right here in the bowl. And maybe you can relate to this. It's really frustrating, it's really annoying if you have to jump back to this point or maybe even to that and just start all over again. And I was talking to a couple of friends of mine and Thomas from the channel Experience Nature, which you can find on my starting page in the suggested channels, um, had a great idea. And I'm going to show you this. It's a different method than the salt water boiling one, which did not work well for me. And maybe that's an alternative that you can use too. It's very simple, but it does work. Let's go. All right, guys. So the only things you need to dry your woodworking projects, for example, a cooksa like this, effectively is a paper box, like a parcel, for example. You need to be able to close this properly, right? Then you also need some paper towel or just regular toilet paper like this here and of course the respective project. Let's just take this cooks out, okay? And what you do then is the following. First of all, you fill up this cavity, kind of like the bowl, with some of the toilet paper. And once that is stuffed, you just take some more toilet paper and you start to wrap this all around the project as if you would mummify it, right? Just like this. And it's really important that you close off everything thoroughly. You want an even layer of um, yeah, cover alongside this, really like a mummy. Just go in patterns that are basically halfway overlapping, like one here, then there, and so on. I'm just going to demonstrate this quickly. So yeah, once this is basically all wrapped up fully, then we take this and we would put it inside that paper parcel. And once this has been done, we then also fill up all the remaining void with more of that tissue paper or toilet paper, right? And let me just give you another example. I'm also working on a soup plate with a handle at the moment. That's this one right here. See, this is fully covered. And what happens if you do this is that the moisture of your green wood that's evaporating will just go right into that toilet paper. This acts like a sponge and will contain the moisture and just let it evaporate very, very slowly and very evenly. And the same accounts for the paper box. That's why it's so important that you use a paper box because also the paper box gets a certain degree of humidity and basically you're building some sort of a humidor like the um, so you can find them in cigar stores, for example. And what happens then with the wood is that all those tiny pores that you have in your green wood will just emit the moisture very evenly, very slowly, and you have a drying process that can be prolonged for an extended period of time. And this, in return, makes your wood stay in one piece. Because those cracks basically happen due to yeah, a, a too fast alteration of the moisture inside the actual grain, inside the fibers. Just picture this, like if you got two fibers that look like this and they're drying very fast, then they start to shrink and see what happens. Then your wood cracks, right? And it's just a handy little tip because a lot of people do complain about this yeah, salt boiling, salt water boiling type of technique because the cooks are then taste salty. Sometimes it still goes bust after that and you can't really get proper results. And since I use this method, I'm just perfectly capable of making nice little projects like these with very little effort. And the good thing is also you can reuse a box like this. It's not an item that you just need to throw away, like for example, the salt water in the case that you have to just do a new kind of pot every once in a while, right? So this worked really well for me and I want to make sure that the credit really goes to Thomas. Please make sure to check out his channel as it's linked in my suggested channels. And yeah, I hope that this just helps you in doing this 
yeah, type of project like a cook saw or anything else could also be a spoon, right, a plate, um, maybe some figurine, whatever you come up with. And I hope that you will get proper results because people talk a lot about carving itself. There's plenty of tutorials online, but I have the feeling that the only method to dry a cooker that's propagated is actually the salt water boiling one. But a simple solution like this can make all the difference. It worked for me. I can promise you that it will work for you for as long as you make sure that everything's nicely padded and you've got a nice firm box with a lot of those tissue papers in that will absorb all the moisture and then create a climate in which the wood can dry very slowly and very evenly. So yeah, give it a try. If it works, let me know how that went. If it didn't work and you encountered problems, please also leave a comment below so other people can learn from your mistakes, just like they could learn from mine. All right. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet. And if this is helpful to somebody else, please also share the video with the respective person, okay? And up until then, I just wish you a happy crafting and a great day. See you in the next video. Take good care. Bye-bye.